Yesterday, OpenAI released GPT-5, and Cursor quickly made it their default coding model, saying it is the smartest coding model we've ever tried. So today, I decided to get my hands dirty with GPT-5 to see if it lives up to the hype. I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm going to make a change in a real functioning app, and then I'm gonna build a new app from scratch. The first thing I'm gonna do is have it make some changes to my real app. Tomorrow I'm launching a product on Product Hunt and I want to update my landing page. So this is my page as it stands right now. And we're gonna wanna change some of this so that we can promote the Product Hunt launch. So let's go ahead and ask GPT-5 to do that. I've written up this prompt to update the page and I have six different areas that I wanna change. So hopefully it's able to find all of the relevant files and make those changes. Okay, looks like it's doing some thinking. Now it is quickly reading through all of these files and now it's planning some next steps. Okay, and now after it's done a lot of thinking and reading, it's going to modify all of the relevant files. Okay, looks like it's making some additional changes, although there seems to be something wrong inside of this diff display, but I think it's applying it correctly to the file. Still kind of weird though. Okay, here we go. It's made all of the relevant changes. There's seven files that had to be changed. Let's just flip back to the UI. Well, this doesn't look that great. I was really thinking to embed something like this, so I will have to give it some further instructions, but let's see what the rest of it looks like. Yeah, we still got these sections. It looks like it broke this part. Okay, so first impression, it took a really long time to make not that many changes, and it also didn't quite pick up on my intent with this section. So let me give it a clarifying follow-up and we'll see how that goes. Okay, I gave it a follow-up talking about the specific product hunt embed link, asking it to make some changes to the styles and add a new section featuring my YouTube video. Okay, looks like it's made the additional changes. Let's check this out. Whoa, okay, that is looking a lot cooler. This is getting kind of cropped out. This is a little too much. Okay, that looks fine. Scrolling down. What? it? I don't know why it decided to make these colored now. That's not what I wanted. And it also didn't change the border the way that I wanted. Mm. It's not quite following the instructions I'm giving it. Let me go ahead and ask it to backtrack on some of these changes and hopefully fix that. Okay, I've requested some changes so that it backtracks on some of those things and also adds a couple of other details. Okay, well, this one looks correct. That's good. This got dialed way too far back, so we need to fix that. Okay, I like the confetti. That is looking like I wanted. We got these sections, that all looks good. Okay, this actually got fixed, so it was able to backtrack correctly and adjust the color of these things. So let me just ask it for one more change to make this look a little better. You know, one observation I have about this model is that it seems to want to do a little bit more than what you ask. This is something that I remember seeing with Sonnet 3.7 and it was definitely a characteristic I did not like. So when Sonnet 4 came out, I was really happy to see it kind of doing exactly what you asked for. Okay, doing a final review, I noticed that when I asked it to change the CTA, it fixed it here but down here, it's still using the old CTA. And that's something I feel like Sonnet would have gotten right. I can't be totally sure, but that's just my vibe. Okay, so after about 25 minutes, I did get it working the way that I want. It was okay. Uh, I still feel like it would have been a little smoother with Sonnet, but now let's try building a simple full stack app using GPT-5. Actually, at the very end of this, I ran into an error that GPT-5 really struggled with and that was making this countdown start counting down right away as soon as you refresh the page and I went through like three different prompts and it couldn't figure it out I asked Sonnet one time and and it started working right away so anyway just another data point there okay so moving on let's create a full stack app with GPT-5 the first thing I'm gonna do is run npx create volo app dot and that's gonna initialize a full stack app in my current folder. It's a free open source starter kit, so check the link in the description and it's gonna get the whole project started for us and get us past a lot of the initial setup stuff like the database and auth. Okay, so we're signed in and the project is ready for us to build some features. I'll make sure GPT-5 is selected and I'll describe my project. 
I'm going to tag create brief, which is essentially a prompt to help me define the brief for the project. You can check out this related video to see my whole workflow for building stuff like this. But basically it's just creating a document that's going to help us define what this project's all about that we can tag as additional context in future prompts. We are creating a farming simulation game where the player will be able to move around the screen and do things like farming and feeding animals and decorating their house. It's going to be a simple browser-based game and we'll continue to add features as we go along. Looking at its thinking steps, it seems to be thinking along the right lines because it's analyzing the project and it's understanding what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, I think the brief looks good. Let's go ahead and use the plan feature command to make this game a reality. Please outline all of the necessary steps we need to take to build the initial version of the game. Now what's going to make this a full stack app? I'm going to make sure that all of the state of the game is actually saved into the database. So we got the full stack there. So the UI is going to make requests to a server, which is going to store it in the database. It'll be associated with your account. Okay, it's really taking some time to read through everything. And this is a pattern I've noticed with GPT-5 is whenever you start a new chat, it just tries to soak up the context of everything. And maybe that's a good thing for building certain features, but stuff like this, it's really overthinking its steps. Okay, we got our initial plan. Now just immediately, this isn't quite a markdown file. It's more of a text file with these bullets. There's no nice headers and stuff, but I'll let that go. Okay, so reviewing this, it's kind of dense, but there are some things in here like this, use a single JSON blob for MVP. That's gonna hold all of the game state across all the objects. You know, at first I was like, that doesn't sound right. But after I thought about it, yeah, maybe, because it's just easier to load game that way. And you don't have the state like scattered across a lot of tables, but still, I don't know, like it's a questionable decision. The other thing I don't see in here is any talk about how we're gonna implement the graphics for this game. So I'm gonna ask it to add those details and we'll just go with the JSON thing for now. It seems a little off, but We'll live with it. Okay, great. It added a detailed graphic section. I think that's good enough to start. Let's go ahead and have it implement phase one. I'm hesitant to start a new chat because I know it's gonna spend forever gathering context again. So hopefully this chat will at least get me started and then I'll do some of the other phases in parallel. I just wanna emphasize this model is slow. It wrote a grand total of like a hundred lines and I think this took like five to 10 minutes. All right, I push the database changes. Now we should be able to execute this plan in parallel. So let's go ahead and open up multiple tabs. I'll just say, please implement plan one, phase two. I'll open up a separate chat, say phase three. A lot of this stuff I think can go together, at least phase two and three. And then I think we can do four, five, six, seven all together. So I'll roll through that and show you what the game looks like after it's done with all these phases because it's probably going to take a while. Okay guys, it's been about an hour and a half and GPT-5 has worked through six different phases of development on this game. So here's the moment of truth. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> this, this is the game. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not super impressive and I don't know if I have unrealistic expectations, but I kind of have a feeling that Claude models could definitely get this done. I'm actually excited to try that out. and I'll probably make a separate video on that. But yeah, from the first 24 hours working with it, I feel like it's pretty slow. It kept running into errors as it was developing this and I had to keep pasting things back in to get it to work. And it was over engineering certain things and writing legacy migrations, even though this is a brand new game and it was slow. Yeah, I know I said it twice, but I just wanna emphasize it. Anyway, overall, GPT-5 was a bit of a dud and I'm definitely gonna be sticking with the Anthropic Claude models for now. I should probably give Claude code another shot. I've tried it a few times, but it hasn't quite clicked. I really like having a user interface and being able to clearly see the code that was changed and roll back to a checkpoint but I do recognize that they're in a good position and obviously people are getting some high quality outputs from it. I'm also excited to keep using the cursor CLI and see the new features that they add. I know that they have 
that sort of code reviewing feature that I'm talking about in that CLI, so that's pretty nice. But in general, yeah, it seems like Claude models are still the way to go. But I'm curious to hear from you all, so leave a comment down below. What was your experience with GPT-5? I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.